So now, we've got our keynote introduction. Um, last night, somebody in this room said to me, why do you have a guy from a record label leading a futuristic music conference? We're about to find out. I'd like to bring to the stage Sandy from Universal Music Group, president of Asia. Thank you. Um, first thing is, um, who am I? So I run the Asian office for Universal. Um, and I'm also the head of new business for Asia Pacific. So first question is, what is new business? I have no freaking idea. Um, it's basically whatever makes money. So I go around the region trying to find new money for Universal. Um, first slide. So as Ben says, what's a guy from a ma major record label doing at a cool, funky event like IMS? Um, shouldn't we all be dead and buried, or at least in some zombified state? Um, maybe. Um, but I refer to a comment that Mark Twain made in um, 1897 when the newspaper published a report of his death. And he said, he was still alive at the time, so he responded himself. Um, but he did die 10 years later on, but at the time when they made the report, he was still alive. Um, and in the case of Universal, any talk about our death is premature. Because the truth is, in Southeast Asia, Universal music is actually growing. Um, we've got 21 days to the end of the year. If everything goes well in the next 21 days, this would be our most profitable year in 10 years. So it's the reverse of dying. We're actually excelling. Next slide. Um, four years ago, when I was made the president of the region, I thought I'd do something really presidential uh, by having a mission statement and a presentation to senior management in Universal, uh, which has gone on to haunt me for the last four years. Um, I thought I'd share it with you and kind of figure out where my future lies. So the first thing is, this is a graph of the whole music industry around the world from 1973, which was then published in 2009. So you see how the industry has grown, the value of the industry in billions, uh, the formats that came in at different points in time, and it tells you the story of the music industry. So if we click the button once, the peak of the industry was somewhere around the late 2000 period, where CD was at its maximum. That was the, the golden period where all music executives drank champagne and ate caviar and played golf. Um, my golf is terrible. So. Um, so when I saw this graph, I said I had to share it, because it's, if, you, if you want to know where you're going to go in the future, it's really important to know where you came from. So I took this graph, and I said, well, we need to make it a bit more relevant. And I said, have you clicked? Yes. So I said, since this was 2010, I was being presidential, let's add in the 2010 figures. And then let's also take the kind of uh, marker of where 2010 is. So that's where the business was in 2010. And if you click again, again, so that decline from 2000 to 2010, over 10 years, is a 50% decline of the business. The two smaller arrows are indicating what kind of formats were generating the total value. If you click it again, it cleans up. So I'm not faking it. I'm not changing anything. It is where it is. So the funny thing about it is when I did this graph, or when I did this, this whole look at this graph, something struck me. Given the shape of the graph, the thing that struck me was that this wasn't the first time we were at this level of business. It's a bell-shaped graph. So with a bell-shaped graph, you draw a straight line to it, it touches on two points. So we were exactly the same value of the business in 1989. So the funny thing is, in, no, 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 we need to go back. And all the other stuff. This is the finger. Yeah, stop there. OK. So, but in 1989, we were just starting to get the champagne ready. CD had launched as a format a few years early on. It was ramping up and making tons of money for us. You know. But in 2010, at the same level, we were talking of doom and gloom, the death and the burial of the music industry. But that wasn't what struck me. 
This is what struck me. We weren't at the same place in 1989. We were at the same place in 1989. So not only was the total business exactly the same at the two points, the change of formats was exactly the same at the two points. In 1989, we had a declining format, which was the majority. Right, we had a new business called CD that was 30% of our business and growing, and an old format called cassette that was 70% and declining. Click again. That's exactly where we were in 2010, except the old format was called CD. The new format was called digital. That was freaky. So then I thought I'd be presidential. And this is where I got in trouble. So I said to my guys, what if, given that we are exactly the same place we were in 1989, what if we were really, really positive, rather than getting stuck in the doom and gloom, what if we were really, really positive and said, let's rewind the clock back to 1989? What if we made that 2010? What would the future be if everything that was to come afterwards, click please, was the future? It would mean that over the next 12 years from 2010, we would go through the single biggest growth of the music industry or the value of the music industry that we'd ever seen. This is for recorded product. I'm talking about record companies. Click. Guess what everybody did? The room was split into two reactions. Half laughed. <laughs> and half were dumbfounded. I think my boss, who some of you know, thought to himself, what the fuck have I done? Who is this lunatic? But I had a reason for this. Click. This is a picture of a bunch of girls at a Beatles concert in the 60s. Click, please. This is a bunch of girls that I took a picture of outside the Mayfair in London when we were having an MDs conference in London where Justin Bieber was being introduced to us as a potential artist. They knew about Justin Bieber long before we did, and they were waiting outside for him. Can you go back again? Now go forward again. It's the same. In fact, if you really think about it, and now you can click, sorry for preempting all of it, the use and demand for music is higher than it's ever been. The problem is that at that point in time in 2010, we hadn't figured out how to monetize it. And we're still figuring out how to monetize it. And then I stumbled on another idea. And the idea is that there are more brands out there trying to target more consumers at an early age than ever before. And they are throwing more money at doing this than ever before. So my whole theory was if you could get, you know, okay, you're all a bit young, but if you ever saw Ghostbusters, the, the old statement was like, don't let the, the, the beams cross, right? But what would happen if we got the two laser beams and made them cross? More music being consumed and, and utilized more than ever, and brands wanting to reach a public more than ever. If we could get them to cross, we would have found a way to monetize. What did they do? They made me head of new business for Asia Pacific. Um, and I'm proud to say, at 2014, as I mentioned to you before, in the region, we have managed to keep trajectory on that curve. So I said to you, 21 days, if we hit our plan, which I think we will, it'll be the highest profit we've made in 10 years. So I'm not insane. And I hope that's the reason why Ben invited me. So what's all of this got to do with EDM? Okay. 
Next slide. So yesterday, I was at a networking breakfast um, hosted by a friend of mine. And sitting next to me was another good friend of mine from Samsung. I don't know whether Nicholas Wodke is here, but he's the head of music for Samsung for the region. And I just Googled, I just thought it would be a good example. I just Googled Samsung sponsorship this morning, by the way, while I was doing this presentation. And Samsung sponsors everything from a celebrity chef to a racing car to a football team, uh, the opera house, everybody's favorite, the World Rowing Championships, um, and music. So Samsung is obviously spending a lot of money. So the question is, is there a way we can engage with somebody like Samsung to get them interested in music and make it work for them as well. So the trick about all of these things is finding something that works for everybody as opposed to how can you give me a check. Next slide. Case in point. Um, who likes Paramore? Okay, it's an EDM group. So nobody likes Paramore. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Paramore is not a universal artist anyway, so I think they crap. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, so this is a standard poster you get for an artist coming through the region, basically. It's an artist where they're performing on what date, right? But this is not really the true poster you will see. This is probably the poster they send to management for approval, right? When the artist actually arrives in the market, it's something more like this, okay? With all these brand partners at the bottom down here. And the truth is, the reason why that's necessary is whether we like it or not, if you want to target the mass market, spending power is a little bit less in Asia, but artist fees tend to be higher in Asia than they are in other parts of the world. So the only way they can afford to do it is to actually get sponsorship involved. And it normally takes on that kind of look. Um, and in most cases, there's always a telco involved. Click. Those of you who missed it, click. That's the telco, right? And of course, if there are a whole bunch of cool guys who understand music in the telco, they know the bands they want to get behind, they know the bands they don't want to get behind, and if they find a band that they really want to get behind, they spend a lot more money getting behind the band. Click. Okay, this is a mouth, not finger. Okay, so you can tell they spend more money because it says presents. And what we found is that telcos were doing this all the time, in all the territories, all the time. And the, I have nothing against telcos spending money on this because they're selling our artists anyway. My whole question is that, is there a way we could give the telcos more bang for their buck to keep them more interested in doing this on a more regular basis than just signing a check for 100000 or $500,000 having it last for, for four weeks and then disappear with no follow-up or anything. My whole question was, could we do something for the telco that engage, them for a, engage with them for a whole year where the consumers got access to free music or some kind of music experience, uh, merchandising, chances to win prizes, fly away to different countries and see different things, go to live shows, for no more money than they were already spending on what they were doing on these ad hoc platforms. I thought it was a great idea. Um, so in 2009, we started. And the first partner we did it with was with Singtel. Um, those of you who live in Singapore might be familiar with a platform called Amped. The Amped platform was built and run for Singtel by Universal Music. Um, and the whole idea was to have a platform that Singtel could use to engage with its customers on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, half-yearly, annual basis with music at little or no charge to the consumer themselves. The amount of money Singtel spent extra on Amped than it did from sponsoring single events was no different. The whole premise that we said to Singtel is that this is not to cut the promoter out. If an artist comes in that you want to be involved with, we'll take the money that's been allocated for AMP and give it to the promoter the same way you would have done the whole thing. But it will come bundled with, after you go, there's access to free music, you get free ringtones, you get to download stuff, you get to fly away, you get merchandising, all as part of a whole bundle that you continue to actually work with the consumer 
long after the ban has left. So Singtel said, yeah, it sounds great, but I'm not quite sure it really works. So I said, let's give it a try anyway. And we said, OK, we'll try it. So for those of you, again, who live in Singapore, if you follow the telcos, you will know that the battleground of the telcos is the Straits Times on Sunday. Full page color ads, you know, M1, Singtel, Starhub, then M1, Singtel, Starhub, then M1, Starhub, Singtel. All in the same paper, full page color, always, you know, who's got the biggest organ. Um, So we said, let's show you the value of a partnership with Universal. So on the week we launched the collaboration, this is the newspaper ad that came from Singtel, and the newspaper ad on the same day from its nearest rival. The one on the right has input from Universal. The one on the left has clowns, balloons, and a puppy dog somewhere here, I think. I don't know about you, but I think you can see the value of a partnership with us. So immediately, it distinguishes one brand from the other. The offers are no different. The subsidi subsidies of the handsets are no different. But oh my god, is this, isn't there a different feel? So it didn't just end with the newspaper ad on Sunday. And Lady Gaga wasn't the only artist that we did this with. So Jackie Chung was the biggest Chinese artist we have on our roster. So for an event that featured Jackie Chung, everybody lined up to go to the concert, except if you were a Singtel subscriber on Amped, you got a fast track where nobody had to line up. You just walked straight in. Not only that, you got an exclusive area at the show, a photo session with Jackie, as well as a lot of afterglow activities. We did this over and over and over again. So it's about creating a value proposition that differentiates one brand from the other. And that is what this partnership that Universal has been doing. That's been driving our business. Click. That is actually taken at the Lady Gaga showcase. I don't know about you, because the other trigger for the telcos is the price of SMS. Every time an SMS drops by one cent, the other telco drops by one cent. I can tell you, after the engagement with us on this platform, it didn't matter how much M1 or Starhub dropped the SMS price, those guys weren't moving from Singtel. They were hooked. Next one. Um, I believe that the boy is now in therapy because um, <laughs> his, his, his mother actually made him take off the shirt. Um, at the age of 18. Um, but this is what we do. When we don't compete with the promoters, we try and work with the promoters, we try and find a win, win, win. So when we talk about partnerships, it literally is a partnership. It's not about getting a check. Click. If you can repeat this, you have a business. And this is to give you a snapshot. It's not all of them, by the way. I couldn't find half the logos in time for the presentation to be finished. These are the partnerships that we have around the world and around the region that we've been running for the last three years. Most recently, with Smart Asiata in Cambodia, where we don't even have a company. But we have a deal in Cambodia. Click. Now we get to the EDM part. Okay, now you can all wake up. Um, so there is no doubt for us as Universal that EDM is changing the game of the music industry. It is a key driver for us. Click. It is one of the main drivers that's moving us off CD and fast tracking us into the streaming business. Um, Time Out in Chicago says that EDM is the driving beat behind pop sales, whether it's Rihanna, whether it's Ellie Goulding, whether it's Ariana Grande, they are all collaborations with key EDM DJs. Click. So 
this again, not my words, has been said to be the soundtrack of, of choice for the new generation. You guys are all responsible, so I withdraw all responsibility for anything that happens next. Um, but I can only imagine what nursing homes are going to be like in the next 40, 50 years. <laughs> Your fault. Your fault, your fault, your fault. Okay? I am innocent. Click. So, to show you how serious Universal has been with EDM, uh, four years ago we opened a label specifically for EDM called PMAM, um, based out of Sweden for the whole world. And just last week we announced the opening of After Club to focus on Latin based EDM. You do this quickly now. We're running short of time. Um, in a short four years, and I'm going to let this run by itself, and you can read all the names, we have signed collaborations and distribution deals and direct signings with some of the biggest DJs in the world. But it gives you an idea of the level of commitment we have towards this genre. And not only that, we have a huge incubation line of up-and-coming DJs all through PMAM. Click. In four years, it's been amazing. In the last 12 months, they've generated 2.5 billion streams and over 30 million tracks sold. This is just from AMPM within Universal. Um, and this might, be back, this might be out of date because this was six months ago. Click. Um, in Asia, the numbers are also quite, quite good. For Avicii, 100, almost 170 million stream views. Uh, Zed with 90 million. Swedish House Mafia with 40. But with Swedish House Mafia, we kind of adopted it halfway through because we bought EMI, so it only counts for half of the time we had it. Um, but not only that, Avicii was also number one on iTunes in Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Singapore. Uh, this is number one, not talking about top ten. Top ten probably are the rest of the territories. Um, and, and Avicii stepped up by doing a whole bunch of local collaborations in Taiwan, in China, in uh, Korea, and in India. Um, so not only did he recognize the fact that he was a big artist, but he understood that in order to tap Asia, there had to be some sort of you know, cooperation to get his brand out there. And it's been really, really successful. So I, I know that Kevin showed you some, some numbers just now, but I wanted you to see the numbers from our point of view with regards to actual sales and activations. So next click. Pop quiz. Which was the highest ranking country for stream views for our EDM tracks? in the region. So I look after Asia, excluding India and Japan. So can I have a guess? Philippines. Good, good call. Anybody else? Indonesia. Good call. We'll, we've got no time. So first one. Korea, with um, almost one quarter of all the views. Next one. Didn't see that one coming. All right. Next one. Next one. Next one. Those are the top five for stream views for universal based EDM content in the last 12 months. The one thing I will tell you is that the numbers are significant. In comparison to our total catalog on new hit songs, the number of EDM linked tracks is actually significant. Click, please. So we're going to wrap this up soon. So, Given our commitment to EDM, given our commitment to brand partnerships, there's definitely going to be somewhere along the line where Universal is going to get involved in the events of EDM directly. So either, like I said, we're not in, in this to, to become promoters in our own right, but to collaborate with promoters who have the same minded vision as us in order to grow it, not just for themselves, but for the bigger partnership at large and also for the benefit of the artist. So if we can get that right, Asia is at a tipping point. I mean, Lincoln has been a, you know, the vanguard with regards to Zook out long, long before anybody else caught, out, caught it on. Sensation is coming in. Fantasyland's coming in. Ultra is already coming in. I mean, we are at the start of a very, very big boom if we solve this next issue. Click. 
which is the elephant in the room. There's one thing that Asia has a lot of difficulty with, and that is death. Click. <clears throat> okay, so brands are ex extremely sensitive, governments are extremely sensitive. There needs to be a concerted effort to make sure that as we roll out these things in Asia and we want them to get bigger and bigger and bigger, we need to make sure this is under control. If it's not under control, I can guarantee you we're not going to get sponsorship, we're not going to get government support, and we're slowly not going to get an event. Click. But personally, I am dying to see the explosion of EDM, and I'm dying to see the collaboration of Universal and our partners together with many of you, and I look forward to talking to you after this. Thank you very much. Click. Yeah.